I present you Lenka Pinkot. She is the head of Agile Transformation with Raiffeisen. Uh, Lenka, you're in the middle. In the middle. Yep. John Williams. You, which you've seen before, is the CEO of the in, uh, Institute of Leadership and Management. <laughs> ah! <laughs> and uh, Pavel Yashevsky, head of Business Transformation and um, Digitalization Bureau uh, for SMEs and Corporates with BNP Paribas. You have the longest title, I have to tell yeah. you. I used to, now it's a bit different, but when we started here, that was my role. But, uh, but okay. again, I have uh, long experiences with it, so I'll be sharing my experiences on digital transformation, not the CRM area today. Okay, okay, so see, uh, moving quite a lot. Um, I would just want to start off, like, uh, you all have mics, so let's not be formal, it's just the end of the day, it's just, just, just this discussion and the ceremony between us and the cocktails. I just want to ask you, from your experience, in this transformation, the huge transformation that we have seen in the past years uh, that ba banks have undertaken, what is the biggest challenge in the mind shift, uh, mind shift, uh, mindset shift of people? What was your experience with that change? Because you can tick all the boxes, but how do you change the way that the people are working? John, can you share something? Uh, yes, by all means, yeah. I, I think that the biggest change that I saw in, in the mindset uh, of both organizations and individuals w within banks, I think, is a sort of, um, if this doesn't sound too esoteric, a realization that, that there's a purpose, that digitization is the means, not the end, and that there is a purpose to using uh, digital technologies, and that purpose is actually to enable customers to get a better service actually. So it was this, this shift from the, uh, I call, I'll call it selfishness, the sort of the profit imperative, if you like, <laughs> the selfishness of banks, not all the way to selflessness, because we don't want companies to be selfless, into the middle, this realization, you mentioned co-creation earlier on, yeah. this realization that co-creation is actually the, uh, the ambition that we should have as organizations. And I think the biggest challenge there now is maintaining that position in the middle and not slipping back into, well, actually, let's just be profit orientated and be selfish as banks, and let's not start giving away the bank in order to make the customers happy. But maintaining that position in the, in, in the middle, recognizing that actually this is about how do we with the SMEs co-create an outcome that's profitable for both of us. But from the way the leaders are behaving, I'm really curious, what, what is the change there? Because I'm really also curious what happened also in the other organizations. You cannot be the leader that we see in the, I don't know, the Netflix series of Suits or the likes of it. It's like way past, in the past. Uh, yeah, well, not quite, not quite. Because the, the, in, in a way, the, for me, the, the vision of the, the perfect leader future leader mm. is somebody who has the all of the good soft things that we want from leaders like the, the, um, uh, the willingness to empower and the empathy and compassion and all those good things and yet retains an understanding that the point of leadership is to achieve a result mm. and, and and that's a bit like the the sort of the middle pathway of the mindset of the banks the best organizations and the best leaders will make that uh, position their own in the marketplace. They will recognize actually, yeah, of course, we want to be nice, if I can use that word to customers, we want to be nice to our employees. We also want to actually be nice to our shareholders and stakeholders by being profitable. Okay. Lenka, what do you feel about that? <laughs> yeah, so I would probably look at this uh, from a different angle because this, like, okay, we want to be nice, we want to be more customer-centric is good. Um, there's a lot of people from banking here, maybe all of them. I am actually not from banking. I'm coming from a uh, different industry. I was in different industries before, and I have to say that sometimes agility and mindset change is kind of like pushed by what is happening around you. I was working in different industry, which was moving very fast. We were under pressure of competitors, 
but also newcomers to the market and also by our own customers because if we were not fast enough, our customers who were global market players were actually investing in the solution by themselves. And here the biggest challenge which I see in banking is actually to realize that change is happening. And change is happening on many fronts. I like research, I especially uh, like research from IMD, uh, it's a school in Switzerland, where they have a beautiful thing, it's called Digital Fortex, and that is uh, something that they measure from, measure from 2015, they look how much certain industries are actually exposed to disruptive technologies. Banking and financial industry is one of the most impacted, not the most one, but they are in top five. And yet, uh, I would say that banks are still kind of like confident that it's okay, you know, it will pass. So I would say it will not pass. So that's one, <laughs> that's one area. The other area is people. Because, you know, the generations are changing. We have new generations coming to be, you know, to work for banks. We want to attract talents. But these talents, they have different expectations. Like, we heard fintechs here. And they say, well, banks, you know, you're kind of slow. And then in the morning, there were guys from this AI, this artificial intelligence, and say, well, you know, I, we understand you want to try the competence inside. But, yeah, are you aware that these AI experts, do they really want to work for you? you kind of like rigid, you know? So that's, that's another big force. And the third force are our customers because they are all exposed to digital experience. And you know, if something goes easy in some area, they want to have it in the other area as well. So they are impacting their expectations from banks is changing. And so for me, the biggest challenge with mindset change is to realize, yeah, it's here. We need to do something about that. Then the way how to do it, that's another question. But fortunately, there's much more guidance on that. <laughs> yeah, I saw you nodding quite a lot, Pavel. What do you think about that? Um, I completely agree. Uh, I believe, just to, to, to very shortly summarize, there was a word leader, not manager. Yeah, I believe that's one of the, of the mindset that has to change. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the, the agile uh, responsive organization need to have leaders, not line managers. Yep. But maybe going a step, step backwards because uh, Many times, unfortunately, when organizations think about digital transformation, they think about digital. And, and the worst cases that can happen, that such transformations are driven by IT. I've seen a lot of them. I have never particularly uh, took place in, in, in any of them, took part, but uh, it sometimes happens. But even though such change is driven by business because Transformation is change of the mindset, of the strategy. Digital the transformation is not only about technology, it's, right? It's not at all about technology, sorry. It's about uh, the culture yeah. behind, yes. Uh, yes. The, the business model, the, the values, exactly. and, and technology is, is only secondary. So even if it's not even driven by, uh, by IT, very often the, let's say, technological part is uh, overestimated and mm. cultural part or human Underest part is, is underestimated. So. Exactly. And it's unfortunately a common anti-pattern. And uh, what I mean if it's not underestimated. For example, if you have a digital transformation and we know that we have to change our payment ecosystem, I mean from the technical perspective, it's just a, a perspective of time and money. If you spend more money, you'll do it faster. If you spend less money, you'll do it faster. But you cannot tackle culture this way. You cannot say that I will change the culture of my organization if I spend 10 million euro in yeah. six months, but if I spend 5 million euro, I will make it in 12 months, and this is the, you know, this is the, uh, uh, this is the chart, the, the, the project, and we will be there in 10 months. It's 99% sure. So again, it's long-lasting, and you cannot have a full control of it. So and this you have is to the, be consistent all yes. the way, just because people will derail when they go back and forth, and you have exactly. to be there to, to manage the flow. Are there any models that have inspired your transformation? Because yeah, my favorite book is called Switch. I recommend it to everyone. Okay. Uh, the subtitle for that is called uh, How to Make a Change When It's Hard. It's based on understanding our brain, behavioral psychology. I can mm -hmm. say I'm uh, secretly using it all the time. It's working. So I would recommend this one. <laughs> okay. Um, but in uh, Raiffeisen, is there any model that you have used in your internal struggle to find the best fit? 
Well, we actually used this one. It's not a model like you imagine, um, for instance, very famous safe or scrum or scrum or whatever. We are not focused on that. Mm -hmm. We are really focused on how to make a change. And yes, we actually follow this one. Uh, okay. Though it's not um, anywhere on the wall. <laughs> but uh, the way how we uh, lead our transformation is by uh, understanding first the values that we want to achieve by that. Then we have uh, principles of adaptive organization. We use things that we call destination postcards. It's a description um, like where we want to get in a couple of years, what kind of bank we want to be. And then, of course, another very crucial element for us is empowerment and working with people. I see my colleagues here, you know, who are <laughs> looking at me. You have to nod right now. <laughs> no, that's, that's the secret because, you know, I am head of Agile Transformation, but me, myself, I can't transform anything like how they are the ones who are transforming, they are the ones who are working with the teams, it's all about them. And mm -hmm. so when we talk about leadership, uh, yes, one thing that we already actually did at Raiffeisen Bank, we launched, created and launched our own Agile Leadership Development Program for managers to help them to understand what agility means, what kind of new demands are now put on managers, what is the Agile Leadership, and help them to go through the change and help their teams. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're trying to find your fit in your own context rather than using a uh, blueprint uh, and have a checklist. Uh, absolutely. Kind of way. Absolutely, because I would say one of the strengths of Raiffeisen, and I said I'm not from banking, but this is my third bank. Uh, but it's like, you know, I, I tried few. You're kind of in <laughs> denial there, you know? <laughs> well, it was a very short experience. In some ways, I'm How many experience. banks there should be if you say that you're from banking? Because <laughs> three is not enough. <laughs> no, yeah, but it's only four years. But what I want to say that what is great advantage of Raiffeisen Bank is that we have international community of um, agile leaders, of agile transformation leaders, and of coaches. We don't have consultants. We meet between ourselves. We have 12 banks who are going through transformation simultaneously. We meet, uh, we discuss, we learn from each other, we adjust. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The reason I'm asking, and I think it's really nice and uh, very good inspirational model that you're having, the reason I'm asking is that I'm also often working with clients that believe that you take the pill and you have the model, and then uh, why it's not working. So you want to say something? Yeah, please, Joe. Yeah, I was just going to reinforce that in, 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 in a way to say that I'd, my experience has been, I used to run the Agile Business Consortium, so yep. I, I did a little bit of agility with all sorts of, of businesses. Um, th there isn't a model which can be easily transported to another organization yep. because the, you know, we talked about culture before. Every, every organization has a unique culture and it's very difficult even with we know that there are agile methodologies for example which are more than one of them and they are excellent starting places they need exactly. to be fit around the um, around the culture i used to um, I was talking about this the other day actually uh, I, I used to talk to an, a, a number of organizations banks in particular about black swan events and just mm -hmm. have scenario planning sessions and and say to them well, we're all familiar with google pay or apple pay what happens if we get Google Bank? Okay, Google just decides to say, we'll do SME banking. <laughs> That's quite a lot of competition, actually. And, it, and one, of the, one of the organizations we, we talked to, we came to the conclusion that the only thing keeping banks alive is regulators. <laughs> because they're the only people who wouldn't let Google or Apple take over everything that banks do. And it's an interesting uh, conversation piece amongst banks, actually. <laughs> yeah, that's a very nice angle. Um, what was the story in BNP Paribas? Uh, what was the story? Maybe I'll start with, with the beginning. Uh, that's, let's say, that, that's my approach. I, we, said, we were talking about, the, let's say, responsive organizations. Yep. Yeah, but getting back to the, to the source, why, why we have to change? What is the need of, mm. to, to, to change? I strongly believe that right now in SME, also in retail corporate banking, there, there has become you know, a complete change in source of the competitive advantage. Like many years ago, the banks were, let's say, uh, focusing on, on price, for example. Price was the differentiation factor. Or product, I mean, one, two, three, four products. Yeah, Who had yeah. better products, whatever that would mean. Uh, but right now, in, in, in today, when we have completely different users, you know, persons using banking services in their personal space are users of pay, Facebook, Twitter, Google, and so on, they expect something completely different. 
and the same people are standing behind SMEs and corporate customers yeah. because at the end there are persons. For so. a long time the banks have forgotten that yeah. and uh, offering a very nice experience online on the personal level and then being completely, you know, the opposite, a yeah. totally different interface. Product centric, not customer centric. Product centric, push to the client, this kind of things. Yeah. And SMEs has always been like in the middle, you know, not retail, not corporate. No, just, you know, pushing uh, the stuff. So, so to go further, uh, you have to focus on customer experience. End-to-end mm -hmm. -end customer journey is the expectations, and they're constantly changing. Mm -hmm. So if you want to compete on that level, you have to also constantly change. And the old paradigm doesn't, didn't support it. So banks have to find a way to be more responsive, as we're talking today. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, a great example, not, uh, not a methodology, but a framework, is Scrum. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not saying that all banks should implement Scrum because I completely no, agree with, each with, his uh, own story. With, with Mark. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. again, there are just three values. Inspection, transparency, adaptation. So look what we're doing. Does it make sense? If not, change. So on, so on, and so on. So mm -hmm. in both, uh, let's say, transformations that I took part or I co-created, first one was in Rafa in Mopolska, uh, like five or six years ago. The other one in BAP was just a need to change, to be more responsive, to be uh, more <clears throat> aware of, uh, let's say, to empower people, to let them make mistakes, but to learn and be more and more responsive. And uh, I believe that the most important success factor was that it started from the culture, from the values. So mm. the, as, uh, what I began with, from the roots. Yeah, you have to start from this very deep level if you wanted to change. And you have to start both ways, from the, from the board of management and from a, from a single person. But you have to go so deep to change the values, to change the mindset, to change the culture. And you have to be aware that it will last a few years mm -hmm. and you will never stop. So the transformation, I don't know whether we should call it transformation anymore. It's just business as usual. Within yep. this business as usual, you have to integrate it in your DNA that you have to constantly change. That the we world in six months that, uh, will be different than today, and exactly. you will have to be different. Whatever that different means, because nobody knows, I believe. Yeah, we need to That's leave the point. change, basically. But I want to pick on something, sorry, just a, I want to pick on something that you said before, because you have to allow them to fail. And from my experience, this is the most difficult part, because on the one hand, you have this transformation in which you encourage uh, people to innovate, and of course, you cannot be efficient while innovating. Yeah? But on the other hand, you have another layer that is, is pressing on the cost. How do you do with that? How do you deal with both of them? That's, uh, that's, that's a big challenge, and, and, and generally that's a big challenge in terms of, of this transformation, what you said, the, the challenge for people. Because yeah. when someone worked in a traditional bank for 15 years, and his role was to mitigate risk, yeah. to assure compliance, and to do what he was told by his manager, not leader, mm -hmm. and then he has to be a kind of entrepreneur and exactly. uh, decide on his own. And even not be hierarchical over yeah. the team, that's which is like the cherry on the cake. Yeah, so that's, so that's a challenge. And I believe that, uh, again, maybe uh, I will not be original, but again, let's say, implementing end-to-end -end process of product ownership in terms of assigning product owners who will be empowered mm. and who will be responsible both for regulation, innovation, business as usual, sales. You have to empower people and let them decide. For the whole thing. For the whole thing end to mm -hmm. end, which also mm -hmm. can be a challenge in terms of the organization, because in banks, yeah. you know, we have compliance, IT security, internal audit, uh, so on, so on, and so on. And in terms of people, because what, what, you, what, what, what Yulenka said a few minutes ago, maybe we do not have such people inside the banks. Because ah. the, why those people work in bank before? Because I build, m most I think of them we felt can comfortable talk about this subject in the evening. In, in this, <laughs> in this, let's say, uh, in this old model. Because if they were not, maybe they were working in fintech companies. Yeah. So mm -hmm. sometimes that means uh, very often, let's say, a, a tough decisions. I'm not saying that we should be like Elon Musk because I do not support it, and we should, you know, uh, lay off all, all the people working in bank and, and find the other ones. But when you're looking for specific roles maybe you will not be able to find them in the bank. And you have to go to the, to the market and find people with the right 
uh, mindset. Like Dinkel Flenka. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and values. <laughs> because it's not, it's not about the hard skills anymore, yeah? And, and, uh, yeah. And, and it's hard to change people's values or mindset, especially in a short period of time. Which one? Lenka, yeah, yes. Well, I, Please just, uh, we, are, we are finishing this, and uh, so it's, it's like, I just, uh, what you mentioned, I was sure, just a very um, short, private, funny story. When I was joining banking, I heard feedback from one of the board member from a very classic bank in the Czech industry, and they said, like, Lenka, uh, she's not a banking material, she doesn't fit in here. And I was thinking, bravo, because I'm not here to fit in, I'm here to change. You know, so sometimes you need to be brave to welcome people with different mindset to help you adjust your own mindset. Don't be afraid of that. But in terms of this failing efficiency, etc., I would say that for me, one of the critical thing is to have psychological safety in your company and in your teams and transparency. Going so that, back to culture. Yeah, back to culture. Yeah, because, you know, when some things are going wrong, you should not feel like you need to hide it. You should feel like, yeah, this is the time to raise my hand. So it's about retrospectives, um, it's about uh, having like short time doing something and then reflect. It's about transparency and it's about trust that when I raise my hand, it will be perceived positively and that I don't have to hide it. So for instance, in my own team of transformation, we have two white boards. One is called success board and the other is called fuck up board. And when something happens, we put a sticker on these boards because we want to be transparent. Sometimes we do good and sometimes we you know, don't, don't, don't do that well. <laughs> I want to share, just before giving the word for closing, I want to share also a personal story about uh, the transformation of a banker, a 15-year-old banker at that time, into an agile leader. And after one year of uh, working agile, me being sort of fired by the agile coach and kicked outside of meeting because I was directing the team too much. So that was one of the lessons that I learned from wanting to do good, you know, from wanting to help the team actually is, it was like a, it went backwards and luckily enough we had a strong <laughs> agile coach and I got a lesson that I will never forget. John. Uh, just very quickly, uh, we started yeah. out by talking about mindset. If we want really great SME bankers, they need to be SMEs in here. Yep. Not bankers. Indeed. Wow. Couldn't uh, ask for a better closure. <laughs> <laughs>